Well, that's what it looks like. My shape. Oh, wait. Hello. Welcome again to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling show. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is off battling hurricanes, doing her job. Wow, I like different shape. I need a haircut. To get more aluminum for that, though. Cash in more aluminum. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. What the heck is that? Oh, I know what that is. And please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, as I do every Tuesday, because I've had a day off somewhat, go back to work tomorrow, so I want to get this video done as quickly as I could, as efficiently with giving enough content as far as I can. Because it's Tuesday, that means two things. So two for Tuesday. Going to have some smack, talk about some SmackDown, and talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. Unfortunately, I'm still under my live stream suspension. WWE. But I'll still talk a little bit about the Mixed Match Challenge. It's, that's different when you're not doing it live. I don't know. I'll get to that later. But we have SmackDown first. SmackDown was a really wrestle-heavy card. Very little promo or recap. A little bit. Snippets here and there, but for the most part, it was all wrestling. It was good. That's what makes SmackDown so much of the better show than Raw. Well, that and it's shorter, too. And the two hours seems like a quick breeze. You know, I need my little energy water. I still have to go collect some room tonight. I'll do that while the editing process. So let's get right to the matches. First off, we have woo, Charlotte Flair versus Eva Hot Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is still so good. Now that she's evil heel Becky Lynch, she's vicious. Um, she's still going after the arm, still working over Charlotte's arm. I mean, still really smart, though. She knows her what her finisher is. She knows how to get her finisher. And she does a lot of things. She even busted out a few new moves. She's going up to the top rope more. Hmm. I like. And she has a new outfit, too. Which looks a little bit better. than her all kind of drab brown stuff. Although I, I think my favorite outfit of hers was still the two-piece. She still looks better in the two-piece. I don't know. Might just be me. Um, I think the only thing, the only thing that really stood in this this match, that that kind of dropped it down a little bit, that was a terrible corner slingshot. Like uh, you could literally see, like Charlotte did the the typical slingshot thing. Becky Lynch literally landed a hundred feet square before she just like launched herself. And I don't know. I mean, I am impressed with the fact that they can travel so much, go through. So many time zones. I wonder if it's. I wonder if the night time is different though. Would that be like our night there, like their day in Australia? I forget. But still, the fact that they do that with very little jet lag and travel so much. Give them all a day off. You hobo Tom. You gotta get back to work. You dumb son of a bitch. Why'd you leave work? Got some pillows there on the floor. Take a nap. I'm supposed to be here all day long. Let's go back to the list. There was an Eddie Guerrero moment. I think um, a couple of days ago, I think it would have been Eddie Guerrero's 51st birthday. Um, again, the stipulation with this match is that if Becky got disqualified, she would lose the belt. So she couldn't do anything under truly underhanded. So uh, she pushed Charlotte into the ref, so there's a little ref bump. She brought the belt into the ring. No one, I don't, she didn't do anything with it. The, the ref just saw her holding the belt. Charlotte was on the ground. The ref said, what did you do with that belt? You know, you can get disqualified. Give me that belt back. Very Eddie Guerrero-ish. Um, didn't. The weird thing is, because Becky's a heel, why'd she stop the count? Let Charlotte Flair get counted out. 
And then they both started to go up to the top and just used to, and just like threw each other's bodies at each other. Looks great, but I've never seen Becky do that. She never had that many top rope moves. Especially with as far as splashes. I think every so often she would break out a missile drop kick or a type of drop kick. But they like they were both slaying each other over the ropes. I mean this was a really fun match. And then they got to the outside of the ring. Again, Becky just oh Becky even went for for a arm break for arm bar. Again, set up for for a disarmor. Um, Charlotte was working over Becky's neck, just kind of just beating her. Then they got to the outside of the ring. I think that was the time like Charlotte just like flung herself over the top rope, landed on Becky. They just started beating each other up. Becky threw Charlotte into the ring post and barricade. And we got a dusty finish, baby. Nobody wins. I should get a little icon for that. Every time I do that. <laughs> One more icon. It's a dusty finish, baby. Nobody wins. Well, because it was a double count out. But really, this was, I mean, minus the one thing, this is again a classic cheeseburger match. A really good match, really fun, really great pace. In fact, this match, I don't know what it was, but it, it was a rematch from the Super Showdown. This match seemed more fun and more organic. Just didn't seem as planned. It wasn't as long. Especially that last spot. They're at the top of the ramp. Becky Lynch is leaving. She's She got done throwing Charlotte around. She's leaving with her belt. Charlotte spears her through the LED light panel. And, and she messed her wrist up. Like there was blood there and that's not... She did not you do not juice your wrist. That was that was legit blood, and I've broken my wrist before. It's not fun, because unless you want to spend probably a month in a cast, I think I manned up and just wrapped it up for a good week, and just kind of dealt with the pain until I realized I I lost some bench press weight and and, and curl strength. Then I went to go see a doctor. Then I was in a brace. To let it actually heal up. So we'll see. Then I hope Charlotte did not do anything terrible to her wrist. I mean, it's one thing if you sprain it. I think I broke. Let's see here. Broke this thumb here, the ring finger, and this bone here. So stuff you really don't want to be doing. And this, and then we just, I think just a little bit of, of what happened with Samoa Joe, but then for the most part, we just went to the second match of the evening, which was a qualifying for the match they're going to have in Saudi Arabia. Part of the, I don't know, some tournament. Tournaments are good. Tournaments are fun. It's only to bring, bring, bring back King of the Ring one day. That's the best tournament ever. I have King, the Macho King, Randy Savage. They need to crown a new king, eventually. We had Jeff Hardy versus Samoa Joe. And Jeff Hardy had like a, had, um, I know I just watched the Chronicles of Riddick. And he had like a face painted on his face on each side. It does look creepy. It look, it look, I'll tell you, it looked Halloweenish. Whoever does Jeff Hardy's face paint, they're good. Samoa Joe is just Samoa Joe. And Joe comes out and he just starts to be brutal. Just starts doing his typical Samoa Joe strikes on Jeff Hardy. Um, eventually he throws Jeff Hardy to the outside, tries to kick Jeff Hardy. The leg hits the, hits the metal subs though. Hubris. And then, of course, Hardy goes after the knee. This is the weak part. And this was a weird match because the ref, ref stepped in and said, uh -uh, This match is over. I'm calling this match. 
And Jeff Hardy won by way of referee decision. I mean, it was a ham sandwich match. And the reason why it was a ham sandwich, I don't know, referee decisions, unless it's super obvious and within the storyline, or even if it is real, I don't know. It just doesn't do it for me. Oh, and then we have Paige comes out. We have the first ever at Evolution, the last woman standing match between Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch. That should be good. I'm still waiting for when either Charlotte Flair or those Flair forehead capillaries or even Becky Lynch decides to, to juice themselves, blade themselves, and just start to bleed. That would be different. That would be good, especially between those two. Those two could probably pull it off. I know it's done a lot in, I think it was done a lot in Mexico. I think it was Abby Apache. Did the blade job to herself. And I think, I forget if it was Triple A or. MLW, well, whatever the whatever the other Lucha promotion is, uh, and and, Lu and Lucha Underground, okay, it's 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 left and right, whatever they feel, whatever they feel the need is, whatever works within the story, they just don't do it to do it, but but whenever it makes sense, they do it. So, again, that would be another first. Probably hasn't happened in WWE. I'd say since probably the Jumping Bomb Angel. And that would be in the mid '80s, I think. But that's that's been a long time since that's ever happened. Maybe it's maybe it happened sometime in, in the ruthless aggression and attitude era. Again, I don't remember that much. I didn't, I stopped wrestling, but it just got bad. So there's that though. Hopefully we'll see it again if that happens. WWE, one shiny quarter in my mailbox. Hobo Tom will be happy, or you can just lift my suspension. And then we have Miss TV. So good. He's, he's still upset about his match between Daniel and Bryan, and he shows it. Um, again, he tries to start the pot between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles, are his two guests. Daniel Bryan and AJ just seem to be having so much fun at his expense. Even the Miz almost smiles. You can always tell when the rest of them smile. They kind of have to bite the bottom lip. And it's just so obvious. I mean, then the Miz just gets annoyed at all the sportsmanship between AJ and Daniel Bryan. It's like, good, fine. And then and finally, when Daniel Bryan and AJ gets into each other's face, finally, good, come on, this is a good fight, fight, fight. Again, just trying to string stuff up. Um, Daniel Bryan just match length throughout the whole thing. Miz is there to stir the pot. This led to a match between AJ Styles and Shelton Benjamin. And this was a really, this was another good match. I mean, the fact that, I, think, I don't think they ever face each other. I know for a while, Shelton Benjamin was in New Japan. AJ Styles more famously in New Japan in the Bullet Club. Forget if Shelton Benjamin was in Chaos. Or if he was actually in no faction. But the strikes were heavy. They knew what they were doing. They seemed to harken back to the New Japan. New Japan days was really good. The Miz and Daniel Bryan were both on commentary. Wow, those two stole the show, though. Shelton Benjamin's tremendous wrestler, tremendous striker. The same with AJ Styles. Tremendous wrestler, tremendous striker. The thing with a AJ is that he can beat you so many ways. I mean, he can either tap you out with a calf crusher. He has the Styles Clash, the Phenomenal Forearm, uh, the 450 Splash. There's so much in his arsenal and repertoire, it doesn't matter. 
Um, he hit the phenomenal forearm on Shelton Benjamin. One, two, three. AJ Slash remains in the Miz and Alan Bryan just keep on barking at each other. Really good stuff. Again, this was a fun match. This was, again, your classic cheeseburger match. Uh, this led then to an Aiden English segment one, one night in Milwaukee. And you kind of knew this was going to happen. Um, either that or or because it ended like, oh, we're so appreciative of you, Aiden English. I want to tell you. And and then Aiden English kind of puts his hand on Lana's elbow, elbow and tries to insinuate more. But Lana's like, go ahead, play the rest of the clip. No, no. I think... Um, Aiden threatened Rusev. He called Rusev out to the ring. Said, let's get Rusev Day back together, but you have to dump Lana. Lana said, go ahead, play the rest of the clip. I have no... F and, and of course, it was just... Lana said, ah, I don't know. What are you doing touching me? I'm leaving. I figured it would be something goofy. Like, I need you to hold this surprise birthday gift for Rusev. <laughs> that probably would have been funnier. So eventually, we're going to get Aiden English versus Rusev. Rusev chased Aiden English around. That's good. Oh, um, next week, Rey Mysterio Jr. is coming back. Oh, that's right. I get that's my spa day. I get a condo sit at my parents' place with the three pools, hot tub, jacuzzi, and working TV set. Feeling giddy. Oh, and cheez -Its and chocolate. Oh, cheez -Its and chocolate and, and, and Pepsi. Oh, dude, I'm living large next week. And Aiden it got swerved by Lana. And this set up really for a semi-lackluster main event. We have the Big Show. Oh, it's the Big Show. Versus Randy Orton. Oh, wait, there we go. There's a pose. Can't do it quite yet, sitting down. The, but um, it was a good match. I mean, Big Show just showed that he was too powerful. He would throw Randy Orton around. Randy Orton would get a couple strikes and doing a lot of uh, joint manipulation, going after limbs, kind of like the old limb targeting. Um, eventually, Randy Orton gets gets shoved off. I try to get back, and the ref. Ref again is doing the count. Hey, come on, get back in here. Obviously distracted. Randy Orton hits the big show with a thumb to the eye. And he did get a draping DDT off as well. Again, he caught the big show coming back into the ring. But then later on, he got the thumb to the eye. Again, just a lot of joint manipulation doing the, doing the stops. He's the punt. And then eventually hit the RKO on the Big Show. Got the one, two, three. So we now know that going into the tournament, it's going to be John Cena. Kurt Angle. Jeff Hardy for now. And Randy Orton. So I think next week, we're going to have one, no, two more. From Raw, and two more from SmackDown. Because the Crown Jewel, and you don't see me looking at the camera because I'm looking at my calendar. Crown Jewel is like the twentieth, I think. Or the twenty, sometime around then. I think they said it's two weeks from Friday. Might make it the 26th. Yeah, that makes sense. That would be two matches, the 15th, two matches, the 16th, and the go-home show, the 22nd, 23rd. That makes sense. And with my only thing about this match, it was a really kind of short, wonky match. I knew what was going to happen, the thumb to the eye. 
not as vicious as Randy Orton's been. It was a ham sandwich match. And that was it for SmackDown. Um, it, it was a fun, it was a fun show. A lot of wrestling in, a lot of wrestling. It got me involved. Um, I was cheering. I was being confused. I'm like, oh wow, that's over already. But hey, it was it was a fun show. And being just two hours, it just seems to go by so much quicker. Especially when you have good quality, like like fifteen, twenty minute long matches with like just five minute long segments in between. The commercial still kind of kill. And I need to find an intermission picture. Or something like that. Oh, what funny thing happened? Who acted like Bugs Bunny today? Dude. It wasn't that long ago. Well, let's talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. Again, unfortunately, I'm banned from my live stream for about 80 more days. Oh, wow. Yeah, about 81 more days. Yep. December 31st, probably do a little special New Year's Eve party. So let's talk. Oh, I know what it was. Tweety cheek. Um, let's talk about the Mixed Match Challenge. Hard Truth <laughs> during SmackDown. That was a segment with Hard Truth and Carmella. <laughs> Carmella, I don't know why Hard Truth. He just acts so confused. He thought he was going against Ric Flair, and like he, when he realized Ric Flair was in the building, he just decided to leave. Carmella's like, "We have a match." It's like Ric Flair's not here. Carmella just, oh, why me? But the first match, uh, I forget the name of the team, but it was Ember Moon and Braun Strowman. I forget, I forget what the name of the team is. V versus B and B, or as I call them, the Bailey Club. And this was a fun match. <laughs> Bailey seemed absolutely terrified whenever, whenever Braun Strowman would get near her. I can see why. Again, so the match started off really with Braun Strowman and Finn Balor. And the smaller Finn again, he goes after the knees. Smart guy. I mean, he uses the ropes for leverage. He does a lot of running moves, things to gain momentum, things to kind of counteract Braun's power. It just doesn't work that, that well. And Braun just, I think at one point, club fists, club Finn's chest in. Just held him. Oh! I mean, it's such a thud, though. Let's see here. Oh, even more so than that. Like, right against the back, just needs a thud. That's good. Um, then eventually... <laughs> oh, nobody gets, gets, gets out. Nobody really gets out of their gear, almost. I think mean, Bailey's still wearing a shirt. Braun, of course, always wears her shirt. Ember Moon's wearing her shirt. I mean, it's just... You know they're having fun. And, and it seems a little more fun, like a house show style match. Um, Braun has a great headbutt. He headbutts Finn like a small would headbutt poor Finn. Um, Bailey gets the hot tag, finally. And actually does really good against Ember Moon. And they're making Ember Moon look weak. Ember Moon has her moments, but Bailey just kind of woman handles her. Um, Braun had to make the tag. Braun had, he had to make the save first because Bailey hit a Bailey to belly on Ember Moon. So Braun literally just reached into the ring from the floor and like pulled Ember Moon out. That was good, and and she's like slumped in the corner. He says, "Hey ref, watch this," and just literally like. Tags her right on the shoulder. <laughs> and the rest like tag Bailey out, Finn in. Finn's still like oh, what what where where am why am I here? What what year is it? 
And, and Braun Strowman starts going in the corner, and Bailey starts <laughs> she, she starts running away. It's kind of funny. Um, then Bailey just kind of she also takes herself out of the match too, which is kind of weird. Because eventually Finn does come to gets gets a couple of shots in on Braun, does a turtle stomp, not the coup de gras, but the turtle stomp onto Braun. Um, Braun kind of rolls to the other corner. Um, Finn goes out to the top rope. Braun gets up. And then Bailey, for some reason, goes over to attack Ember Moon. And while all this is happening, Braun power slams poor little Finn and Ember Moon and Braun to win. I mean, that was a, it was a fun match. I mean, the wrestling was solid, especially with Braun and Finn. It was a cheeseburger match. Eventually, what really has to happen, because I think this is a point where I, I, don't know, I don't know if it's just me, or if other people, again, if you if it's just me, you can leave a comment and say it's just you, or you can say, you're exactly right, Hobo Tom. This has to happen, too, is that the women are allowed to hit and punch and kick and slap the men. Eventually, I think Braun will be the one who could tease it. So he could do it best where he could, like, tease power slamming a woman but have that woman's partner like 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 kick him and she could land on him it would be a good tease though i mean uh, again if you did intergender wrestling right it's just as entertaining as regular wrestling because you know it's all within the confines of pro wrestling as long as it again doesn't get super bloody ecw-ish or, oh, what's that promotion in Japan? Jushin? I, where they're just... Ugh. They cut each other heads open with, like, sickles and knives. and ugh. Or... Or Minoru Suzuki-ish. Or, or having a Minoru Suzuki Asuka moment. Because that just got weird. But if they did it right, it would work. And... I mean, Lucha Underground does it, right? Impact? I don't know if Impact does it. Uh, AAA does it pretty good, too. I mean, as long as it's nothing... And they did they did tease it when James Ellsworth shoved Becky Lynch. It's like, ooh! And and I think I think Becky actually egged him on and, and, and liked it when she shoved him. When she got shoved. So... That's what I have to say about that match. Then we have the Fabulous Truth versus the Phenomenal Flair. Woo! And you can tell Charlotte and AJ kind of mailed it in. Um, Flair's already, she has her wrists all taped up. Again, I hope she's pretty good. Fabulous Truth just come in. They're just. Ha our truth and Carmella are absolutely having so much fun. Charlotte Flair and AJ Styles, whom I saw both in their own respective cars, just seem to kind of mail it in. I mean, AJ didn't even hold the ropes for Charlotte. Charlotte called him on that. He's like, he's like what? They're taller than... I think Charlotte is either taller or almost the same height as AJ is. And, like, this was a... I know the match was about 15 minutes long. I want to say there was like two or three minutes of wrestling. Because this was a comedy match. And it was okay. <laughs> it kind of, kind of reminded me when AJ Styles was, first came in way back in the day with Chikara. Because Shikara was known for doing all the goofy spots. They were known for the dance-offs. If, if, if you've never seen a Shikara match, you want to see probably the three best. There are so many moments, though. You want to see AJ Styles versus the top rope and King, King of Trios. AJ Styles, for the life of him, couldn't hit a phenomenal forearm. The most illegal move in all of wrestling. 
by Oh wow. Ophidian. It's by the Osiris portal. El Genericos dance off with the Osiris portal in a King of Trios match. Delirious versus player Uno. <laughs> Anything with Delirious. Delirious with CM Punk. Delirious with Hulk Cabana. Even Delirious versus El Generica. I mean, they were all classic comedy matches. But if if you don't know what I'm talking about, you want to go to YouTube and definitely look up the El Generico dance off and the most illegal move in wrestling. And you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about because I think for the first 10 minutes of this match, well, for five minutes of it, it was a, it was a dueling chance of what's up versus woo. So that went on. AJ's just in the background looking confused. It's like, I'm tired. I want to go home. I already had a match. I don't want to be here. AJ looked like he kind of mailed it in. He, he, looked, he looked like, what am I doing back in Chikara? Well, again, it was just kind of funny. Mickey of the house? Oh, yeah, then there was a promo with um, Big Country, I guess, Bobby Lashley and Mickey James. And this is Mickey of the house. Wrote that down here somewhere. But I think that, again, it was like two minutes of wrestling. Again, there was a Chikara dance-off. I don't even know what AJ Styles was doing. AJ Styles was just trying to have fun. Oh. And then Charlotte Flair did the Cabbage Patch. AJ Styles. I think everyone started to use splits. They looked at AJ. AJ, do a split. I'm a grown man with kids. But he can't do a split. Splits hurt. Very quick story. When I used to play hockey as a hockey goalie, when I was younger, much younger, much, much younger, I could do splits. I knew it hurt going down, doing the, spl doing the split itself. But then coming back up, it wouldn't hurt. I knew something was wrong, or I thought something felt good when I went down. I'm like, oh, this doesn't hurt anymore. And then I came back up. And I'm like, time out. Oh. Something tightened up down there finally. Again, I think for years I would be a hockey goalie, and then I stopped for a good year, and then I tried to do it again. That's not work. Remember, there's two undefeated in the, in the galaxy, kids. Father Time, Mother Nature. Never going to beat those two. AJ found it the harder way. You can't beat Father Time. Blair did the comedy match. When I did get to the wrestling, Carla Flair did catch Carmella. Should, and she had her in the position almost for like either a tombstone or a Styles Clash. Actually, it would have been a pretty cool reverse styles clash. But yeah, it was it was more like a more set up for a pile driver. And she should have tried to styles clash. That would have been a good ending. Um Again the the end saw AJ going for a sunset flip. R Truth for balance reached out to Carmella. Eventually, Charlotte Flair came over and knocked Carmella off the ring. It was a sunset flip pin by AJ Styles. I mean, this was really a... I hate doing this to AJ. But this was a ham sandwich match. Again, the reason why it's a ham and sandwich match, there was more shenanigans and more nonsense. Again, 
They're probably tired from doing everything, especially AJ. And then Charlotte busted her wrist, so you know she wasn't going to do anything. And she's like, really? She's here? You could tell that something hurt her because she was holding that wrist a little differently when she was coming out and it was all taped up. Her elbow was taped up. I think she, sp she probably sprained it against something or just really banged it funny. Again, you bang your wrist the wrong way and it it's a bone on something contact. That just hurts. So you kind of knew from the get-go the way because Charlotte had her one hair up here, like her other hand was like like down here. It's like, woo It's like, and AJ's just like, okay, I have to challenge a car again. AJ just kind of like mailed it in. And you could tell like, and you could, you, you could see the ref com communicating, okay, this is getting old. Let's, let's just get this over with. So it, it, it was what it was. I mean, AJ Styles is normally a, a, a surf and turf match machine. Hey, everyone has a bad night. Can't fault him for that. Especially if you think about what you did in Chikara. Jeez. I'd guess, say, about 20 year, years ago? Wow. I'm old. But I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, go to YouTube after you watch this video and go check out the most illegal move in wrestling. And... El Generico's dance off, and I might even. Ooh. I don't know if I could actually do that. Nah, that might be getting too creative. Maybe next time I'll try it. I'm gonna have more time. Again, check out those two videos to figure out what I'm talking about. And right now, everyone, again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, you can send me an email. Say, Hobo Tom, I want to find those two matches. You know their specific web address. And I'll say, and I will send you an email back. And you'll also get something special on the show. Generally, you get a shout out with a funny video in your honor.